We have had a cracking day's racing here at Brands Hatch. And in just seven days, we get to do it all again. Round two of the MCE British Superbikes Championship in association with Pirelli is from Alton Park in Cheshire. We will be live on British Eurosport 2 from Pit Lane. As usual, that's next Monday at 12 o'clock midday. Right, the three-wheelers are just about to get underway on their sighting lap and their warm-up lap, so uh, let's hand over to our commentators for the British Sidecar Championship race. And it is multiple world champion and sidecar legend Steve Webster, and he sits alongside Larry Carter. Ten world championships, no less, for Steve Webster. Steve, welcome along. Great to have the British sidecars back here for the Eastern Airways British Sidecar Championship, where they rightly belong on the British Superbike cha Championship calendar. That's right, Larry. It's fantastic to be back here with the... Uh, you know, you know, racing in a, in, a, in a good championship, BSB, you know, not better than that, and it's a uh, smashing, uh, smashing weekend to, uh, to you know, for the lads to show what they, what they can do. We've got World Championship pedigree out there as well, rounding out that front row of the grid with uh, Tim Reeves, a three times world champion, and uh, of course we've got uh, the Virtual Brothers who have that uh, world championship previously, so we've got quality as well as quantity down here on the grid, 11, 12 rows of sidecars here at Brands Hatch. Yeah, it's, it, I think uh, British seems to be pretty good at this sidecar racing, we've got uh, quite a few world championships uh, over the last few years, so it's good to see it's good to see Tim, uh, Tim and Greg here racing um, with, with, with their Honda outfit. Well, we do uh, carry the sidecars at a number of the British Superbike Championship. From here, they come back to the Brass Hatch GP circuit. Then it's on to Knock Hill, Snetterton, Cadwell Park. We have them at Donington. We have them at Silverstone Grand Prix Arena. So a wonderful stage for the chariots to display their wares. They are uh, actually coming under the starter's orders as we uh, go to the green flag line. This is the warm flag, so uh, the important to get some heat into the tyres, Steve, even at this late stage of the day. That's right, yeah, I've been talking to, uh, to Steve Smith from Avon, who's the, who's the uh, technical guy with the Avon tyres, and basically we've only got two types of rear tyre that they can use on the outfits now. One's, one's obviously the hard one, and then there's a medium, uh, medium compound. Yesterday, most of the lads went for the harder compound, and uh, there was a lot of them struggling with grip, so I think today most of them have gone for the softer one, but I've just been told that the track temperature is another five degrees hotter than it was yesterday, so later on in the laps we may see um, quite a few of the teams having problems with the rear tyre. Yeah, and perhaps not so much that the solos would do. Uh, of course, this is a, a Formula One specification, uh, uh, Steve. When we've been used to seeing sidecars on the British Championship circus for the past year or two, it's been the Formula Two version, so these are a lot more powerful machines. Yeah, that's right. The Formula Two is a 600cc engine, and they're, they're, they're a lot shorter chassis. The engine is underneath the driver, let's say, and on, on these bikes with the F1 sidecars, you've got a yeah, 1,000cc four-cylinder four-stroke engine kicking out about 180 brake horsepower. The engine's behind the driver, so the driver's actually sat in front of the engine. It's a lot longer, a little bit more stable uh, on the corners and under, under speed of the big bikes, yeah. Certainly are a, a, a vast, vast uh, improvement from uh, many years ago when it used to be a simple uh, uh, contraption bolted onto the side. These are fully engineered, usually the LCR chassis, the Louis Christensen racing. There is a, a couple of other types, I think there's a Windle in there as well but uh, predominantly the LCR chassis, which is uh, like a space frame monocoque, very, very high-tech engineering. And yeah, Lewis christian has been, uh, I would imagine, over the last 20 years, has been these LCR machines have been developed along with um, Rolf Bieland from Switzerland, who's a... Well, we'll just take a quick look at the grid. We can see that in pole position we've got uh, Reeves and Clues. Alongside them are the Virtual Brothers. Then P3, the second row of the grid, effectively, is Laurie and Neve, and uh, alongside them will be Lovelock and Lawrence. Bear in mind that it is a two-by-two two grid formation. Peach and Richardson go alongside Holland and Watson. Bell and Hawes and Kershaw and Wilson. We've got Knight and Sharp, Guy and McBride, Parkinson, Tritton and Drown and Anderson. Next up, it's Lambert, Schofield, Chaflo, Evenson, Gray to Cable and Allum. As the grid starts to form, it is the 2x2 uh, two two echelon rather than the 4x4 four four as we see with the solo competitors. And important here as well to get a uh, very good start because it's a very, very tight indie circuit, Steve. You've raced it many, many times and it's vital to get into Paddock Hill Bend as quickly as you can. Yeah, with the, out, with the, with the sidecars, basically, you know, it's more... It's a little bit more difficult to pass because obviously you've got that width of the sidecars and it's usually the, the favourite is into Graham Hill Bend on the inside 
down at the bottom of the left hand or so anybody who tries to get you know a bit of a good start and try and just get a few bike lengths in between then instead of having to ride defensively you can you can attack the track and, and get some good lap times in ben Burchell just in shot there his uh, brother tom is a passenger in with a hairline fracture in the pelvis so it's going to be very very physical for that number 16 outfit they come under starters order red light on as soon as it goes out green we're racing oh we have a problem there for the number four outfit and hopefully they can just avoid it oh it gets all sorts of well steve that was very very close into turn one there Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson I think it was that had a problem but Tim Reeves notwithstanding that he's managed to get a good shot into turn one as they go into the right hander of Drew's bend I think the virtual boys are there in third position it looks like Scott Laurie's well placed as well but that was a little bit dramatic on the start line. it is in fact Sir Andy Peach and Charlie Richardson what do you think went wrong yeah, there it, Steve? That, that looked to me like it could have been a, a, a throttle jamming jamming flat out open and uh, or, or something happened there with it because it just went off with a load of smoke and wheel spin so maybe they had a problem with it with the sticking drop there. Well, it is Tim Reeves, originally from just down the road from Brands Hatch uh, near uh, Tunbridge Wells. He's now making his home in Lisbon in Northern Ireland. It's him with his pass Belgian passenger Gregory Clues that leads this one. The yellow flags wave out there because of that incident. That means no overtaking, so they won't be allowed to pass in towards Paddock Hill Bend. We thought it uh, Scotty Laurie had got a good start in that second position, and so he has, Steve. Yeah, that's great to see Scott. I mean, I was talking to Scott last night, and he says all he needs is to follow follow them for two or three laps down. We've got to get a replay there. The smoke coming out the side of the outfit there, Steve, so it looks as though could they have uh, perhaps just done a clutch or something like that? There's yeah. a lot of smoke coming out of that. Possibly it could have done, could have maybe a head gasket or the engine's blown, but Nowadays, with the, with the, with the outfits now, we've got a good oil containment, so it's, uh, there shouldn't be any problem there, because if there was any problem with oil, it would be caught in the catch tank. Well, Tim Reeves now starting to exercise his authority. Virtual just has a look on the inside of glory on that one. <laughs> it's getting a little bit close, but uh, as you would expect, the class of the Virtual Brothers, then that just manages to get underneath the 72 outfit of Scott Laurie and James Neve as they go into Paddock Bend. Now, the big question is, can they reel in the uh, number 77 outfit of Tim Reeves? He had a 1.1 second advantage as they went into that one. He didn't get a particularly good start in Birchill, and that's going to hamper him. Yeah, that's right. He, he, he's now got what, a good uh, six or seven bike lengths to try and catch up there. And basically, what, what will happen if he's not careful is... If, uh, if, if Scott can just tag on the back of him there, he's also got to think about if Scott Laurie starts to attack him, then he basically got to ride fairly defensive as well. But it's, it's smashing to see Scott and, and, and James up there with them, yeah, for sure. Well, as they hit round, Surtees in towards Clark Curve, you can already see that that gap is starting to appear between the second place outfit of the Birchard brothers and Scott Laurie and James Neve in that third position. Keep our eye on the time that time. It was a 48.687 fastest lap of the race as he continues to go away with the three times world champion Tim Reeves and Greg Clues. And all that Birchall can do now is just try and reel him in lap after lap after lap to try and reduce that gap. Yeah, that's right. I suppose if he keeps the pressure on, Tim and Greg will be getting the pit board, they'll realise they've got a few, a few seconds lead, but just keep chipping away at it. Ben, you know, ben and Tom have got to keep the pressure on and, and try and hopefully see that Tim overheats the back tyre or makes a problem and then just, just there to pick up the pieces. Well, this is the battle a lot further down the field, as you can see that the sidecar race is battling right the way down. Ben Bargrave and Callum Lawson battling out with Kirk Craig Chaplow and Dan Evenson. Looks like one of the boys has a problem there. And Barry James. It's Barry James. James. Well, he had a problem yesterday as well, yeah. Steve. And, uh, he ended up uh, in the in the in the, in the kitty litter, let's say, on the outside of Paddock Bend. Yes, and yes, it is race, and it looks like there's uh, yeah. There's some problem there with the outfit that's, that's stopped. Disappointing given that they've hung around all day to go racing and it's lasted so, so long. It's yeah, so frustrating, I guess. Uh, the young, the, you know, Barry, uh, young lad, new to new to sidecar racing, let's say, in the last few years. So he's got, I mean, you know, he's bounced back. Be back next uh, next week for sure. Absolutely, and you find that it is a younger man's game nowadays. I think your dad used to to race, and it used to be uh, the uh, the domain of the older competitors. Nowadays, you look at you look at the likes of Ben Birchall coming through, and uh, and the likes of Tim Reeves, people like that. They're a lot younger than they used to be. Yeah, there's a good there's, there's some good young teams coming through. We've got Ben Bygraves, we've got Stevie Kershaw, we've got quite a few young lads who've come also from the F2 championship to so come into this Formula 1 championship and that's what this class needs, it needs a new young, uh, young, young team isn't it? Phil Bell goes through in that sixth position as they head in towards Paddock Hill Bend 
And uh, the spin just had it spring out a little bit now. That gap that Reeves has got between himself and Birchall as they head down in towards the left-hander of uh, Paddock Ben. That's where the passenger works over time. It just lifts the little wheel up there, you can see. And that's going to be tough for Tom Birchall in the chair with that uh, that injury that he sustained recently. Yeah, when you when you, when you see see the two outfits, the difference also with the weight between Tim Tim and Gregory, their combined weight com compared to Ben and Tom. The, uh, the virtual bike's a lot lighter, and you can see on the corners it becomes a little bit more unstable quicker. But obviously, they can maybe carry a little bit more straight line speed. So, what they what they're gaining on the straight, Tim and Greg are sort of pulling out a little bit maybe on the corner speed. Mitchells of Mansfield, the backer for the virtual boys, they've been with them for a long time. That distinctive red and yellow colour, red and white colour scheme behind the green and yellow outfit of uh, Tim Reeves and Greg Clues. He's been through a few passages. He won uh, his World Championship originally with his brother. Tristan and then the, I think it was Pat Farris that was in the chair for the next couple of world championships but uh, Greg Clues not won a world championship with him and uh, he uh, is another one that I think is, uh, is limiting his outings this year is Tim. Yeah he's, um, it, it looks at one time that Tim would not be uh, contesting this championship and also the world championship because through to uh, lack of funds he's, he's got some sponsorship through from a, a French sponsor so hopefully now they can go on to, uh, to compete in the world championship again as well and carry on uh, doing these events. Well, this is the battle for fourth and fifth position between number 49, Roger Lovelock, and the number 60 outfit of Ben Holland. And Ben Holland in the yellow outfit as he breaks in towards Paddock Hill. Ben, Roger Lovelock, he's been around a little while in the green outfit. It looks like he's got a problem. Holland has got a problem. The passenger, uh, I believe Watson, just hung his hand out and he perhaps didn't just see. Oh, he gets a little oh, bit close. Close. <laughs> uh, Phil a Bell there, yeah. didn't realise he was there. Now, he put his hand up, Phil. That's the one. If he, I mean, if he, if he, if he put put his hand up for sure it's, it's right that uh, Phil Bell should want to, want to come through there but it, it seems as though whatever the problem was has sorted itself out because the number 60 machine the JH Racing uh, LCR Suzuki or Ben Holland uh, for whatever reason he's managed to uh, sort the problem out and uh, the Jordi Phil Bell and Ash Hawes from Bedlington on the LCR Suzuki have taken advantage of that into that sixth position yeah seeing that uh, you know that his hand put, put his hand up there and he obviously thought there was a problem Phil's pulled out, overtaking them on the, after the slipstream and down, down after Paddock and uh, yeah, taking the, taking the advantage. And why not in that situation? Well, he's certainly fighting back is uh, Ben Holland as they go in towards the right hand of the switchback, 180 degree hairpin of Druid. And the battle for uh, fifth and sixth position is raging. It's allowing Roger Lovelock on the number 49 machine just to go. You can just see him. There he is in the green outfit there. He's managed to just put himself into a little bit of a gap as these two trip themselves up. And this is the problem, Steve, is when you end up in a duel like this around the Indy circuit, you just end up costing each other time. That's right. You've got, you know, you've got to ride defensively to, you know, Phil's got to ride defensively to try and try and keep Ben Ben behind, but also try and, you know, to try and to try and catch up. Sometimes they'd be better off just tucking it instead of calling over each other all the time and jumping underneath them. Two of them try and progress and, you know hopefully goes a, 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 as a bit of a tandem let's say yeah try and work together to, yeah. to to get up towards them all the way at the front Tim Reeves is just pulling away from Ben Birchall with Scott Laurie Roger Lovelock on that green Kawasaki which is just exiting Druid's corner as they head in towards bottom Ben but that's the distinctive colour scheme of Tim Reeves and Greg Clues look at Greg Clues he's uh, his arm his helmet is almost kissing the tarmac as he goes through uh, clearways and on to Clark Curve, he's controlling the lead there, he's got a one and a half second advantage as they come across well over half distance now, we're into lap 11 of 18, and Tim Reeves a class act is Tim, he certainly knows his way around Bransach. Yeah, you, you know, you could see from, uh, from from the early years, let's say when uh, you know when Tim came along and he came into the uh, the, the, the sidecar championship I knew straight away that he, he had what it took to become a world champion and yeah, he, he just he, he listened to what he listened to what people were saying, he he learned from the top drivers and he just went on and on and on and, and, and yeah he won his won one of the you know won his first world championship with his brother Tristan and now with uh, Gregory obviously for Gregory it would be fantastic if they could compete again in the world championship this year and trying for him to win his first it would be it would be, it would be perfect yeah well that uh, third position the last step on the podium is by no means certain for Scott Laurie because Roger Lovelock is all over him the uh, black outfit has that podium position at uh, present the battle for third position but that green outfit of 
of uh, Roger Lovelock, the number 45, the uh, driver will race the LCR Suzuki out of Marlborough in Wiltshire. Well, he's got his eyes on that. And there he goes. He's going to have a look underneath the inside of Paddock Bend. Can't just do it on this occasion. Six laps to go, Steve. He's just sussing him out. That's right. I think I think the tyres have definitely come into it. You can hear a little bit of a rumbling in the background. And once the tyres get too warm and they get, you just keep spinning them up, you can just hear that rumbling. And as soon as that starts, then, uh, you know, that, that's a sign that, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, a good time to make a move and get past and try and clear away. Well, he's looking now. He has a look on the inside, going into Surtees. <laughs> and uh, Scott and James Neve takes a cheeky look over the shoulder and he gets an eyeful of green, cowers, green outfit in front of him as they go round the clearways. Scott Laurie, well, he runs a little bit wide. He almost takes to the grass there. And uh, Lovelock will have seen that. He just gets a run down here now, drops into the draft as they go over the uh, line to complete lap number 13. Has a look on the inside now. Oh, it's, that's perfect overtaking maneuver there. It was absolutely that, that's a classical sidecar one, just getting the drag and then jumping up in up on the inside, and then there's nowhere for, uh, for Scott and James to go. Yeah, they're going to find it difficult to respond now. Lovelock runs a little bit wide. That's the third position on the podium now, has been uh, taken over as we're now in amongst the back traffic and this is where it could get interesting, Steve. Well, that's right. As soon as you start to lap the, uh, the, 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 the competitors, they don't, they don't have to move out of the way for you. They can, they can, they're, they're having their own race, so it get, becomes interesting when, uh, you know, when you get a situation where should, should they move out of the way? They see the blue flags, start to see the blue flags when it happens. So. They're in their own race as well, right. of course, and uh, they, they, you can see the, the blue flags if you look closely in the background, and that is to uh, warn that these riders that there is uh, traffic moving a little bit closer behind them. But that is a worse situation there, where Ben Birchall has got sandwiched between two outfits, and it's cost him a few extra uh, tenths of a second there. He's done his best to get through them. It looked like uh, Tom Birchall in the chair was remonstrated a little bit with one or two of the other passengers there. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not, let's like, say, it's not their fault. They're in their own race. They're doing what, you know, they're, they're doing their bit, let's say. And it's, it's, this is when, yeah, the, the, good, the good drivers and passengers, a good team, they'll know. A, pa a good passenger will know where his driver's going to go, whether he's going to jump up underneath somebody because they've been riding together for so long. And, and that's, where it come, that's where a good teamwork comes in. Well, Tim Rees looks like he's controlling this. There'll be the pit boards being hung out. He'll know exactly what the gap is. That gap is now up to 2.4 seconds between the race leader, Tim Rees, and the second placed, yeah, Ben Birchall. That's going to take a bit of catching now, isn't it? With only, with only three laps to go. He's going to, you know, for, for Ben and Tom to try and pull that in now, it's, uh, it's quite a big ask. Yeah, well, this is uh, certainly is, Steve. This is the battle for uh, fifth position between uh, the number eight outfit of Phil Bell and Ashley Hawes. And... Uh, continue to be uh, it's obviously not a problem now for the jh racing outfit of uh, cliff uh, cliff holland ben holland and uh, lee watson we thought that they had that problem earlier on oh it gets it a little bit right and that's where the passenger now comes into play as they that's right. that yeah, was that, that a phantom problem seems to have gone away for, definitely now there seems no problem with the bike it's obviously lapping at uh, decent decent uh, decent lap times we saw ben holland just take a look across to lee watson steve as a driver when that uh, wheel starts coming up you just make sure the passenger's still there yeah great it can be uh, it can be quite a frightening thing when you go into a left-hand corner and you just turn it and you hope your passenger's there and yeah 99 percent of the time they are but just every now and again if they're a little bit late or yeah you've maybe upset them before you got on the bike sometimes they just let you let, let you know that and uh, be a little bit late so the bike's a bit unstable well if anything uh, bell has just gapped as they go in towards uh, Druid's corner and it oh, looks like we've oh, uh, just got a, a bit of a, an incident there that um, a couple of outfits have had a coming together across there uh, we've got the yellow flag situation we've got 170 in drown and uh, Ryan Anderson and we have a red flag situation here at Brands Hatched in the Eastern Airways Sidecar Championship. That incident uh, just on the exit of Clearways Corner, where a couple of uh, outfits have come together. And uh, we're at lap 15. I would imagine, Steve, that would probably be declared a result. Oh, you'd think so, that that would be that would call a result, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Tim and Greg, uh, Tim, Tim and Greg won that one with uh, Ben and Tom second but it's just, I'm not quite sure what happened there with the uh, with the other two outfits whether it was something to do with um, you know getting getting lapped or, uh, or or what there it's always a, a little bit of a problem when there's so much traffic around such a, a short circuit here but that has indeed been declared a result so it will see a win for Tim Reeves and uh, Greg Clues they will take victory over uh, Ben Birchall and his brother Tom Birchall 
uh, and third position that will go the way of Roger Lovelock so good to see him up on the podium with uh, Rick Lawrence is Rick Lawrence one of your ex, uh, ex-men I can't uh, no no he's, uh, he's he's not been one of my passengers he's been, been, been around for a while passengers quite a few people but uh, no he's not not one of, not one of my uh, my bunch let's say oh He's one of the few that probably isn't there, Steve. Yeah. I'm just looking down. Here we go. We're going to get an, uh, a, an idea of what happened here. Oh, it looks as though, yeah, it just got a little bit sideways. Just flipped him over. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, nasty as a couple of the passengers just uh, end up on the floor. But um, medical attention. We hear there is the best marshals and uh, medical personnel here at British Superbike. So they are in good hands. There's Tim Reeves and Greg Clues. They come down pit lane in the uh, Heath Padgett's outfit and they make their way into the pit lane area so with the uh, the race being declared a result that's going to be a victory for Greg Clues and uh, his driver Tim Reeves you can see the Padgett's logo on the side uh, given a little bit of help from uh, that one of your early sponsors I think Steve in, uh, in the early days yeah we uh, in, the, in the early 80s we uh, had a couple of years with uh, Clive Padgett backing us and uh, yeah we had, uh, we had some quite good success with them still going strong as well are the Padgett's team <laughs> well there you go Greg Clusey looks uh, decidedly happy with that one yeah it's been a good weekend for, 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 the, for that pair it's been you know two two wins it's uh, what, what a perfect start to, to a season and the camaraderie of the paddock as well the Ben and Tom Birchall <laughs> so we'll uh, just take a quick look at the result of the uh, Eastern Airways British Sidecar Championship sees a win for Tim Reeves and Greg Clues just ahead of Ben and Tom Birchall Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence coming in third ahead of Scott Laurie and uh, James Neve Bell and Hawes Holland and Watson Kershaw Wilson Bargrave Lawson Chaplow and Evenson and Greg Lamford and Phil Schofield round out the top ten Parkinson Tritton, Grey 2, Horsepole Briggs, Robinson Farmer, Cable Allen, Clark, Graham, Knight Sharp, the Sloan Brothers, James and Wynn, Peach and Richardson, who didn't even get going but are classified in 20th position. That's, that's it. And that, what, what a good result that was for Stevie Kershaw and uh, Rod Wilson. That's only the third time they've been on that bike. Well, here we go. We saw straight away a problem for Andy Peach and Charlie Richards and they pulled straight off the line now whether it was a head gasket, a lot of smoke or uh, something, obviously it wasn't oil because there wasn't a spillage there that came out of that. Their last uh, their race is probably the shortest one of the this season, all of uh, around 50 yards. The Birchard brothers just had a look underneath Scott Laurie and James Neve as they uh, chased Tim Reeves and Greg Clues. Didn't get a particularly good start in the number 16 outfit. This was the battle between uh, Ben Holland and Roger Lovelock. It looked as though there was a problem for Ben Holland. Lee Watson put his hand up. Then it came a little bit close between Phil Bell and Ashley Hawes. And they then uh, duped it out as they went in towards Paddock Hill Bend. A classic outbreaking manoeuvre. Just drafted them down the straight. And the number 49 outfit of Roger Lovelock managed to pass. And we had that incident involving uh, Ian Brown and Ryan Anderson and a couple of other outfits whereby we had a red flag situation and as a result after 15 laps the result was declared let's take a look at the eastern airways championship standings after the weekend here at brands hatch and a double points scored out of two wins for two starts for tim reeves and greg clues two second places for ben and tom birchall on their lcr yamaha then we've got scott laurie and james neve in third position jointly with roger lovelock and rick lawrence bell is next up alongside uh, his passenger Hawes, Holland and Watson, Kershaw and Wilson, Peach and Richardson, Parkinson Tritton, Chaplow and Evenson with just nine points. As indeed do Greg Lambert and Carl Schofield, Bygrave Lawson, Knight and Sharp, Guy McBride, Gray and Two, Drone Anderson, Horsepool and Briggs, Robinson Farmer, Cable and Allen. 19 point scorers out of this uh, two race weekend here at Brands Hatch. And we are here with the winners, Tim Reeves and Greg Clues. Uh, Tim, astonishing story for you. You flew in on Saturday after midday uh, from your home in Ireland. You're here, you've won the race. How good does it feel? Yeah, I'm over the moon, really. I can't put it into words. You know, we weren't on Friday and Saturday morning, we weren't even going to be riding. And we've had an anonymous backer that's come out of the woodwork and uh, absolutely over the moon that we managed to get here in time for the race. And uh, yeah, we, we arrived half an hour before first qualifying and 
yeah, what a result to have two wins and go away leading the championship. I'm over the moon. Now the race that we just saw, you got out of the blocks well, and uh, you were just explaining to me that you wanted to make an early run and uh, try and establish your control over it early on. Yeah, well, Ben's on the pipe. You know, it, there's hardly anything between us, and I knew that I had to make the break from the start and. I'm normally pretty good on the first couple of laps on cold tyres of, of trying to put a gap if I need to and I knew that round here that, that would be the case so it all went to plan and yeah luckily I, I kept my eye on him, I knew where he was and yeah I'm, I'm over the moon. Oh, you make it sound fairly easy, it's not easy for Greg who's your passenger of course. Greg, uh, very small English I know but easy? Yeah, not easy but we have a good, uh, very good start so after we control the race and the tyre but thank you very much all my team and my, and my sponsor, thank you very much. Okay. You, you all make it sound easy. Go on, Tim. Just a quick thank you to Haith and, and Neil at H&S Contractors and, and all the other small backers that we have got that, are, that have stuck with us and uh, hopefully we'll be able to carry on. And, yeah, good job. Thank you. And that was an 11th hour decision to come back into the championship and we are very thankful that you did. Tim Reeves, Red Clues, well done. Thanks very much. OK, the guys now will go off to the podium and as they do, it will be down to Larry Carter to uh, describe events. Well, the crowd start to make their way to the exit here at Brands Hatch after a wonderful weekend of Easter action at the opening round of the British Championship, whereby we've seen two cracking races in the Eastern Airways British Sidecar Championship. Lots of people have enjoyed the action. Sadly, it was just curtailed a little bit earlier than we expect in with uh, that incident in the sidecar race. But uh, victory going the way of Tim Reeves ahead of Ben Birchall and Roger Lovelock with their respective passengers, Greg Clues, Tom Birchall and Rick Lawrence. And uh, hopefully those people will tell them to uh, tell the friends to tune in to British Eurosport to catch the best of the action if they've been here at Brands Hatch, whereby they can re relive it all over again. Great racing throughout the course of the weekend in both the solo and the sidecar classes. And the Eastern Airways British Sidecar Championship podium just about to go. And out they come onto the podium with Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence. They jointly share the third place podium. Nice to see that uh, there's only the one bottle of champagne. It looks like Rick's nicked it. The Birchill boys. Uh, they're in second position once again and the race winner Tim Reeves and Greg Clues as they make their way onto the top of the podium a very very sociable ambience in the sidecar paddock and it's Donna Walton the uh, daughter of David Walton of the L and W concern who are involved with the championship who's making the presentation and uh, Roger Lovelock and Rick Lawrence get a kiss for their efforts as well second position then that goes to the former world champions Ben Birchall and Tom Birchall. They're happy enough with their weekend's work. But a double victory here at Brands Hatch at uh, what we can uh, class as Tim Reeves' local circuit. And his Belgian passenger Greg Clues as well. They get that winner's trophy to take maximum points in the Eastern Airways Sidecar Championship here from Brands.